answering questions in WIAC West Africa examination is very simple. Hello and thanks for watching. My name is Bridget on this channel. I teach sounds, grammar, compositions, and other problematic topics in English. I'll teach you how to answer questions or what you expect in your West African examination. Now, this exam is divided into three papers. The first part is all about essay writing where you are asked to choose some questions out of five questions. Here I have May, SSE, May, June 2012 questions before me. And then we have the section A, which is the essay part. And it says, answer one question only from this section. All questions carry equal marks. Your answer should not be less than 450 words. So what comes to your mind? When you're writing an essay, you have to know your content, organization, mechanical accuracy, and expression. Those are the things to be considered when we mark. Now, in this section, you are faced with five questions, the five essay questions. So the first thing you do, you have to choose right. Choose the aspect, your strength. As a student, you have your strength. No doubt about it. You have your strength. So make sure you choose your, your strength. Now you have, number one, you have spent about six weeks in your new school. Write a letter to your father telling him about your experience so far. This is an example of an informal letter. Make sure you know the organization, you have your content, your mechanical accuracy, that is your writing. That is your punctuation, your spellings are intact. That is what we mean by mechanical accuracy. And then your expressions, make sure you speak correct English. You're not speaking pidgin, hello, or broken English. No, no, no. Don't speak broken English. It is a no-no. You have to express yourself in a... Now let's move on to a second question. Write an article for publication in your school magazine on the dangers of keeping bad company in school. Look at the topic, the dangers of keeping bad company in school. This is an article. Make sure you write the format of your article. That will give you marks in your organizations. Remember I told you your content, your organization, your mechanical accuracy, and your expressions have to be good. The next one is activities such as debates, drama, and excursions are now read in schools in your, in your country. As a senior prefect, write a letter to your principal suggesting the re revival of these activities and pointing out what students stand to gain from taking part in them. This is an example of a formal letter. You're writing to your principal. That means you have to organi organize your formal letter properly. Now let's move on to the fourth question. You are the chief speaker in a debate on the topic, violent video games should be banned. Write your argument for or against the topic. This is an argumentative essay, no doubt about it. And how do you are going to make sure that you use the vocabularies that you have to use in a debate. You don't have to just imagine and then you impose it. We already have a format laid on organization for your debate. So you have to use it organized formats for debate writing. Write a story to illustrate the saying, where there is a will, there is a way. Okay, that question is just a story. And the format is, you have to have a title and then you start your story. Your story must be real. You have to be imaginative. You have to bring out your best. Imagine you're actually talking to me or you're narrating the story to me and you want me to learn something from it. What comes to your mind? You have to create your characters. You have to organize your work. You may actually start from the climax. You may actually start chronologically. That is from the beginning of the story. Or you may actually start from the end. Make sure you're able to link them up. Now, let me dive into content. You know, I said content, organization, and mechanical accuracy and expression. I've actually told you something about organization. That is all the organized formats for each of this essay writing. And then you have your mechanical accuracy, your spelling, your punctuation marks must be good. And then we looked at expression. I already told you, you have to give, you have to write in English, okay? It is use of English, not use of broken English. So you have to use your words. Choose your words properly. 
That is what you have to do. Now, let me dive into content. You know what I call content? Content. That means your points. Your points must actually be good. Make sure you organize your points. And that is what we call thesis statements. Watch my video on writing well. And make sure you write a conclusion, okay? Write your topics, write your points in a sentence. It could be a complex sentence or in a simple sentence or in a compound sentence. Make sure you write all your points. Organize your points in your first paragraph. And then you break down the points in your various paragraphs. And then you have your conclusions where you marry all your points together. All right, now the next section is... In this paper one, we have section B, which is comprehension passage. I think the major aspect you have problems with is that most of us are always too much in a hurry to answer comprehension passages. Where are you running to? Where are you rushing to? Calm down. All you have to do is to read your questions. Okay, and then when you're reading your questions, read your comprehension passage. After reading it, you go back to the questions and then read the comprehension passage again while you answer the question. Note, you don't start your comprehension answers by saying, because, because, no, you don't do that. You have to give a complete sentence when you answer comprehension passages. And yes, the major aspect that we don't like, and I think I didn't like it when I was in school as well, is this grammatical names and function. Watch out for my video on that aspect. Now, if you're looking at grammatical names and function, all you have to do is to know your word class. Your word class, look at that underlined expression. Does it have a verb in it? If it has a verb in it, yes, it becomes a clause. If it does not have a verb in it, then it becomes a phrase. That is number one point. Watch out for the pointers. This underlined expression, is it, what is the behavior of that sentence? Remember, this is how the questions usually come. It will say, what is the grammatical name given to this expression as it is used in the passage? So you have to go back to your passage and look at the full sentence in it. Look at the underlined expression, see how they behave. Look at the attitude before you can conclude on the grammatical names. What are your grammatical names? You have noun phrase and noun clause, adjectival uh, phrase and adjectival clauses or relative clauses. And then we have adverbial phrases and adverbial clauses. And then we have verb phrases as well. It depends on how they come. The major ones you'll find in an examination is your noun phrase and your noun clause, adverbial phrase and adverbial clause, and then you have adjectival phrases or relative clauses. Remember, relative clauses and adjectival clauses are the same because adjectives refer to nouns. They tell us more about it, so they are relative. So you call them relative clauses. So make sure that you look at the attitude of that expression and look at that which precedes the, uh, the, the, one, the uh, underlying expression. For instance, I have, as soon as the child chit chats ended, and then we have ellipses. Now I'm going back to the, the, the passage. Now this is a passage in full. As soon as the chit chat ended, they announced that the irate, that the irate ruling council had decided to confer on him the highest traditional title of the land. And that a, and a date had been set for the great event. Now look at it. As soon as the chit chat ended, they announced. What comes after it? They announced. As soon as the chit chat ended, this is an example of what. What can you tell me? Is an adverb. He's telling us the manner with which something has happened. And now, is there a verb in it for you to know if it is a clause? or a phrase, those are the things you should look out for. Is what is what is after it? We have announced, announced is a verb. And can you see it? Adverb and verb, they work together. Similarly, you don't get confused. Noun phrases also come immediately after or before verbs. But now look at it, we have the manner with which something has taken place as soon as the chit chat ended. And so what is what do we have here? We have adverbial clause, and what do we have? It modifies the verb and nouns. It modifies the verb and nouns. I think we've dealt, oh, we've dealt with that. And then there's this other aspect that you really don't like. We have letter H, that is, for each of the following words, find another word or phrase which means the same and which can replace it as it is used in the passage. Now, what this simply means is this. That particular word should be able to replace it in that passage. 
Don't just imagine words. I know you know a lot of vocabularies. Please be mindful when you choose your words. Okay? If that word is a noun, then it should be replaced with a noun. If that noun is written in plural, then you should be, it should be written in plurals. If that word is a verb, it should be a verb that should be replaced with it. If it's an adjective, it should be an adjective. If it's an adverb, it should be an adverb. And if it is a phrase, okay, make sure that it tallies with it. Make sure that it suits it, suit into that passage. When you fill it in, then it will make sense. It will not change the meaning of that sentence. Now we have another part. We have the read following passage carefully and answer the questions on it. This is another passage you have to look at. The same thing applies in what I've just discussed. And then we have the summary aspect, which is the last aspect of paper one, the summary aspect. Now, when you're reading a summary, do you know the good thing about summary? The good thing about summary is this. The, most of the questions tell it with the paragraphs. So your answers are not far-fetched. So go straight to the point. Make sure you don't write repetitive words. You don't have to be tautological. Watch my videos on tautological words, okay? Now, observe something. When you write a sum in a summary, you don't have to lift the words as it is used in a passage or just write a full paragraph. No, 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 that is not allowed. Just simply summarize that word. Okay, now these are the questions. In five sentences, one for each, state the causes of the worldwide housing problems. In five sentences, five sentences. That means you have sentence one, sentence two, sentence three, sentence four, and sentence five that should answer that question. And the next one is in one sentence, summarize the measures that poor people have adopted to solve their housing problem. So they said what? One sentence. Make sure it's one sentence and not two sentences. After full stop, there you begin another sentence. So make sure that you write a sentence. Observe your simple sentences, complex sentences, and compound sentences. That is all for that is all for paper one. Watch out for how to answer paper two in my next video. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe. Turn on your notification bell so that as soon as I upload videos, you get notified. Share and leave your comments in the comment section below. Success in your examination. Bye-bye.